On episode 357, me, CB, and Alyssa answer community questions. Before that, we discuss a relatively light news week, as well as the games we've been playing. CB sings the praises of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Alyssa checks in with Nightbook as our resident FMV correspondent. And my lord and savior put out his latest title with Near Reincarnation. All that and more on this week's episode of The Gaming Outsider. Greetings, programs. Welcome to episode 357 of The Gaming Outsider, a video game podcast with a focus on our incredible community. It's Monday, August 2nd. I am your guest host once more, Zach Parkerson, and joining me are my friends, Chris Behrensmeyer. Yay! The Gaming Outsider rules again. Yeah, it's so much better without Scott. Yeah. And because Scott's not here, we get to have Alyssa White. Woo! Oh Who's... yeah. Bring the Guys, lady in. You can see, <laughs> right. Now, finally, because of female representation without Scott here trying to share, scare off all the women. <laughs> I don't know. As much as he plays with his hair, I begin to question it sometimes. He's big on his hair? We, I see him as a disheveled mess whenever he's on the show. I hope he oh, hears this. Quite- Oh, I mean, come on, you never seen him? He just sits there the whole time and does this. That's true, he's always trying to braid his hair. And he always talks about product in his hair. <laughs> oh, man. Well, let's, uh, how about we jump off of Scott and just, uh, let's just jump right into what we've been playing, huh? That works for me. Me too. Alyssa, what have you been catching up on? I just started playing Mass Effect 1 again from the Legendary Edition because I'd been playing it and then I got distracted by other games and now I'm jumping back in to finish it up because it's bugging me. I'm like, I gotta finish it and I'm still loving it. I'm almost finished. I'm on the last mission. But yeah, I've really loved just jumping back into the world after so many years and reliving the story and all that. Kane and Ashley, though, are both still pretty terrible. Yeah, I think they always bottom out on the pull list of favorite companions. How far? How far are you into your replay? Um, I just left Ilos. So I'm back on the Citadel. So at the very end, going after oh, okay. Saren. Sa- I love Saren, man. He's such a cool villain. Yeah, I feel like he gets uh, he doesn't get the respect he deserves. Probably because the no, elusive doesn't. man immediately shows up and upstages him, but. It's hard to beat Martin Sheen. That's true. Martin Sheen's pretty great. Are you are you gonna jump right into two after this? I'm not sure. Maybe two is my favorite game of all time. So whoa, oh, yeah. this is news to me. It is. Yeah, I just I love it. I actually played two before I played one originally. Wow. <laughs> did you play? So is, did... it, is that because you're a PlayStation gamer and you couldn't play one? I actually played on Xbox. I don't know oh. why I, I didn't get the first one. I just got the second one, and I was like, oh, I love it. Let's go to number one, and then number three. So I didn't get to carry anything over. But... Who do you romance? Who's your who's your boo? In this game, I romance Caden, even though I'm like, I probably should have chosen someone else. Right, like maybe a wall would have been more interesting. <laughs> Well, I mean, to me, Ashley's a little bit worse, but I'm like, I could have yeah, chosen, I could have chosen Liara or Garrus. Right. Well, yeah, well, but then, but who was your like Mass Effect three? Who did you who did you end up with? Do you do you recall? I chose. I believe I chose Caden. <laughs> oh, okay. But in two, I always, whenever I played, I was always choosing Jacob. Oh, you don't like to mess with the aliens, huh? I guess not. Yeah, I should try, but to my, to, I forget the word, to my credit, there we go, in Mass Effect Andromeda, I did have relations with PB <laughs> okay. and with Liam, so. Oof. A little space <laughs> hoe. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, if you had hooked up with Garrus, he could have had reach and you would have had flexibility. Uh, I, sh- I should do that next time. That's one I of the best. I played again. One of the best Going lines. Garrus. Anyway, C- CB. Oh. Like no. <laughs> wow. CB, what have uh, what have you been playing? <laughs> Sorry, I've been so so sidetracked since relations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Space relations though makes it okay. I know. Um. Well, speaking of relations, I restarted playing Fable. That's a game all about relations. It I is, know. Yeah. Oh, this is this is getting weird, guys. It's a little sexier um, around here when Scott's gone, huh? I know. <laughs> 
Risqué. Um, no, just started playing Fable again because it's been, God, since the original Xbox, since you, I've touched that game. Are you doing the, uh, the anniversary edition? Yeah. So, um, it's, it's time to bring out the bad side. Because the first time I played through that, I was, I tried to play it like a saint. Right, probably, so this, probably to halo over your head or some shit. Yeah, so this time I'm going full horns. It's cool that you grow horns. Why has no one copied this? I don't know. No. But I en- I enjoy it. So I, I I for some reason I was just on a kick to pull something out of uh the the backlog that I hadn't played in a long time and unfortunately I couldn't find my copy of uh Lollipop Chainsaw. So Oh, oh. that's such a good game. You're trying to live in the James Gunn world before Suicide Squad comes out? Yeah. But so it's like, oh, Fable's a close second, I guess. Speaking of uh, good villains, Fable, Jack of Blades is another great villain. Yeah. Very much so. Kill it. I played that first Fable game. I was the right age to replay it like 16 times. Yeah. Yeah. So what about you? What, what, have, what have you been playing, sir? Why? Well, I, I finally. I think I could I f- guess. Well, I'm sure there's something you can guess later, but. Yeah, I did, I'll say I, it now. I rolled credits on the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD um, before Scout, which I think makes me the new biggest Zelda fan oh. on the site. Of course, uh, Scout's obviously a poser. <laughs> Dude, do, do you want to throw that game in the trash, too? It's... boy, what a ride. What a ride it's been with Skyward Sword. It's, uh, I use the expression, a game gets in its own way a lot, but Skyward Sword really does. It's like whenever whenever it's building momentum, you're like, yeah, let's do this dungeon. It's like, but we'll five, find four things first. And then when you go into the four things, it's like, well, while you're here, do you mind grabbing these three things? And I'm like, yes, I do mind. Please stop. <laughs> uh, and it sucks. Uh, it does. It, it makes you revisit the same areas over and over again, which I don't totally hate because they keep it sort of fresh. But there's like 15 to 20 hours of this game where just no story happens. And that's, I feel like that's pretty devastating for a Zelda game. Yeah. And then, it, and then it really, a lot of stories at the end, and it finishes incredibly strong with just two back-to-back awesome, like, you know, motion, uh, like the, the motion sword battle really works well. And it's just, uh, it was super cool, man. Like, you're like raining thunder down. I don't want to give it, you know, spoil the only story in the game, but. It was just, it's just, yeah, very frustrating that a wide, a wide section of it has no sword because, because I don't mind when a game makes me backtrack or revisit areas as long as there's, you know, something new to glean from that, whether, you know, narratively usually, but <sighs> Skyward Sword is, uh, in a lot of ways, it's chores the video game. Oh. No, that's Animal Crossing. Yeah, and somehow, that's it makes true. It, somehow it makes it more fun there. It's relaxing there. You get cute little animals there. I mean, there's cute animals in Skyward Sword, but not as many. No. I'm I'm sorry. I'm still stuck on the fact that you fly around on a shoebill stork. It it's not a loft wing, I'm sorry. It's it's a shoebill stork. Is Which that- if you've never heard one of those things in real life, it is terrifying. Can you ride it in real life? <laughs> yeah, can you? No. That'd be cool. Uh th- they are large. And they are evil, um, but they uh, they make a noise that legitimately sounds like the Predator. Oh, that's so cool. Is that where I they got the noise for the Predator? Uh, no, actually, fun fact, uh, the noise from the Predator was done by Optimus Prime himself. Peter Cullen. Yes, that, that is actually him making that noise. Wow. That's cool. Who will soon be voicing your new truck. Yes. 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 Yeah. Mm, can't wait. Discuss off air. Well, I guess I guess that rounds up what we've been catching up on, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's just so. Zelda's just so sad. Two, two good games and a turd. It's not a turd. <laughs> I mean, you guys are playing like all time classics. I don't know if that's really fair to stack up against Skyward Sword, but it's definitely it's easily the weakest 3D Zelda game. I gladly put it back in its case, and it's been shelved in my collection, where it'll probably stay for quite some time. Yeah, it's definitely near the bottom of the of the franchise. And there are no Zoras. How dare they? Zoras are the best. <laughs> Bastards. 
bastard. But anyway, let's jump, let's jump into uh, this week's news, huh? Yeah. Let's do it. Pretty light week for news overall. Uh, just a couple things jumped in, especially if you're avoiding the Activision Blizzard drama, which I don't feel like we totally need to touch on every week here. No. Uh, but the, no. That seemed, that's dominating all of the news cycle right now. But Annapurna did have its interactive showcase, uh, announcing a bunch of new games and updating a few. Uh, we had a couple game delays with Horizon Forbidden West and Kena Bridge of Spirits. And then uh, next month's PlayStation Plus and Games with Gold titles were were finally revealed. Uh, I'm not sure anything super exciting to talk about here, but Alyssa, is there anything you did want to mention? Let's talk about the Annapurna Interactive Showcase, because there are a few cool-looking games from it. Yeah, I think I think the talk of the show had to be Stray, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Playing as a little stray cat in a sci-fi game. Oh my god, it's so cute! Yeah, it's that's uh, it, it reminds me of Tokyo Jungle, but it looks good. In fact, I never played Tokyo Jungle, but I remember seeing gameplay of it. I didn't. I didn't like it, and I think it was because it was actually quite hard, which I didn't want. For I didn't want to play as a little Pomeranian in a hardcore action <laughs> platformer. Um. Yeah. I mean. It, it, so you're excited for Stray. I'm definitely excited for Stray. I will say A Memoir Blue looked very interesting. R- refresh, refresh me on A Memoir Blue. The trailer was pretty vague. It was very artistic looking. I don't really know what you do in the game, to be honest. I'm just... The art style of the trailer really drew me in. Yeah, but I mean, also, kind of- The Artful Escape, though. That looks really cool. I know it's been in development for a while now. It kind of um, gives me a little bit of vibe, like of uh, oh god, like Sea of Solitude, where they're trying to tell story, like as you're going along. Yeah, and it it does look very good, uh, but I mean, we'll we'll have to see. That's, yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's they it. didn't even have a release date for M M Memoir Blue. Yeah, I, I yeah. Like I agree with you guys. Like stray, stray is where I'm at. Like that, that looks it, it, like a lot of fun. It's it's full. It's going right for all of our hearts. Unless you hate cats, and then well, then you're then you're inhuman. I know, right? Do you hear me, Aaron Peterson of the Hollywood Outsider? You're inhuman know, if you don't Aaron. like cats. Well, I like dogs too. But yeah, I, mean, I do have. They're okay. I got I got two cats and a dog, so so you're I mean, well rounded. Yes. Yeah, you're I mean, good. You're cool. Yeah. <laughs> the two, <laughs> we'll the two cats don't even equal half the weight of the dog, but... Well, one would presume. I guess, I guess there are a lot of tiny dogs, but I'm, I'm bad. Well, a chihuahua is not a dog. <laughs> I think... Oh, boy. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a rat that yips. Just a Taco Bell mascot. <laughs> I, don't, I, th- I thought uh. Solar Ash looked cool, but um, I'm, I'm like the only person in the world who didn't like Hyper Light Drifter, so I don't know if I should trust that this will actually be satisfying. Because Hyper Life Drifter I thought looked amazing, but then I actually didn't like it all. I'm a little bit worried about it. Yeah, I mean, I, the moment I saw, like, that big creature, like, my brain immediately flashed to uh, Shadow of the Colossus, but I'm like, that's... no. Yeah. Anything, anything, anything exciting on this list to you, CB? I mean, just stray. I... A lot of Annapurna's games, I I do enjoy, but it's just one of those until I get my hands on it that I'm kind of, uh, yeah, I'm on the fence. Yeah, I don't they, know where to go with it. Because they're obviously going to, they're trying to be the artful publisher, it is definitely like, it's it's hard to be sold. You know? I mean, yes. they did start out as a um, movie production right. studio. And then they got into gaming, so... So, so pretension is in their DNA. Yeah, I, I... I mean, I'll probably give majority of them a try. Definitely. I, yeah, yeah. I just... Like I said, I, I'm i I'm fenced on, like, everything but Stray. Yeah. I guess I, I, guess I feel the same way. Outer, uh, they announced an Outer Wilds expansion, which I thought was cool, but it, that's yet another game where it seemed to grab everyone but me. It didn't grab me either, just... You know, having the 20-minute loops and then it resetting and 
I just yeah. couldn't get into it. I, I um, yeah, I, I played that one for a while, and then the the twenty minute loop kind of got in the way of everything because I'm like, I really hate having to redo every single one of these things over and over and over and over. So the thought of having to go back to that with an expansion, like, ooh, we're gonna we're gonna push it out to thirty minutes. Whoa. <laughs> Cool. Waste more of my day, please. Thank you. Right. And I remember the ship controls being <clears throat> obnoxious. I knew what they were going for, but it wasn't for me. Yeah. I think we can say we slay it wasn't for any of us out of the three of us. No. Now, it seemed to be a lot of people's like favorite game ever when it came out, but not this crew. No. Yeah. Not at all. No. What about you? What about you, CB? Anything from this slow week you wanted to talk about? Well, I mean, we'll get this out of the way real quick. Horizon Zero Dawn delayed. Not yeah, surprised. To that, I'm to, not surprised. I almost didn't want to put it on the news at all because it's just not even newsworthy because I don't think anybody thought it was coming out this year. No. No. Just like, yeah. remember when they announced the PS5 and they're like, God of War 2 coming 2021 and we all just immediately said, that's a lie. I know. Yeah. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I, I think Q1 2022 is still a bit of a stretch. A little bit just, I, I only don't because it'll have been five years since the first game, and we do know this which was... Seems a, crazy. <laughs> yeah, which... I mean, good on them taking their time, I guess. And sort of rushing it, but it... Um, but it... We know it was a PS4 game originally anyway, so... You would think it would be almost done. Yeah, do you remember this game called Cyberpunk 2077? Yes. It rings a bell, yeah. I mean, uh, look how long that got delayed, and that was in development for, oh, I don't know, a decade? Sure. Um, so, but I'm I'm going to say right now, Q3, 2022. I was going to say I don't think PlayStation could take the hit, but it's obvious, it's obvious at this point they could make nothing, and people would still buy their console. It's true. I mean, I, I really think that if that game doesn't land... Like that's going to be a fairly devastating blow. I think especially it will continue. Coming, well, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, especially with the beloved Horizon Zero Dawn, if Forbidden West does not land and it just gets a lukewarm reception, um I think there's gonna be a lot of pissed off people. I just yeah, I, I want I don't think it'll happen. Just because I think I think PlayStation does get not quite the Nintendo bump, but there's definitely a PlayStation bump. Yeah, and I just I mean, I'm, I'm, it'll sell. I've, I've got faith in Guerrilla Games. I don't. But uh, <laughs> after this last year, I don't have faith in any studio hitting marks anymore. Well, just like, Guerrilla has never made a game I've liked a lot. They've only made because uh, I you know because I didn't like Horizon like anybody or. Yet another game that I guess just didn't hit with me. Oh, I loved Horizon and the uh, DLC it came out with. See, I loved Horizon, so... Well, you should be stoked, CB. I am stoked, but I don't think Q1 2022 is plausible. I'm sort of thinking at least Q2, <clears throat> if not later. All right, well, I will be the, I will, in the rare instance where I'm the optimist. I'm going to say it's coming out Q1 2022. All right. You heard it here first, folks. Um, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits. Um, also not surprised. You know I mean, me? it looks gorgeous. Yeah, this is this is my most anticipated game for the year the, of what we have left. And it's just, uh, it's take your time. It's just for uh, the needs of this podcast. It really sucks that it's coming out in the middle of September when everything else is coming out. Yeah, it's, it's true. I'm I'm really getting to the point that like Q3 is hell window. It's it's getting pretty gnarly, man. It's like a blood September is a bloodbath. And it it still boggles my mind that everybody pushes it to after summer. Right. Like, when when, when free time games, is lessened. Yeah, like ki kids play games. Release games during summer when kids have time. Kids are happy, parents will buy games. And Kane has got that real Zelda adventure spirit that appeals to young people as well. Like uh, that would have been a, a brilliant game, but I guess they needed the time. I just think marketing wise, you you don't want to be surrounded by every other game, but 
All right. And then I guess we could just briefly, briefly, may as well talk about the uh, PlayStation Plus games uh, that are going to be free starting the first Tuesday of August is Hunter's Arena Legends. That's a day one freebie for PlayStation Plus members. And then uh, Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville and Tennis World Tour 2 are your other free ones. I kind of want to try Hunter's Arena because the idea of a Battle Royale but a fighting game sounds interesting. But I just also don't think a Battle Royale fits into my lifestyle, so I don't really know if it's worth getting invested. I'm kind of disappointed in the selection this month with PlayStation Plus. Not a big tennis gal? I'm not a sports gal. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> nor nor am I. I am not a sports gal either. <laughs> yeah, th- <laughs> this this one also kind of fell flat for me for PlayStation this month. Yeah, well, what do you think about Xbox with uh, Darksiders 3 being available for the whole month of August? Uh, you could lately run it from the 16th to the 15th of September, then you got Lost Planet 3... The first half of August, and then Garou, Mark of the Wolves for the back half of August. Boy, I hate the way they roll those out uh, with the dates. But what do you what do you think about those titles? Little stronger, but honestly, not much better. Yeah, That's true. Yeah. No, I mean, I've always wanted to play Lost Planet three, so this will be the perfect time to lie to myself that I'll finally play it. I've never played a Lost Planet game. I don't know if I need to play the other two before three, so. I mean, you don't. Know. Ukulele's solid. It's a sure. good game. Dark Shires 3 is a, I think I gave it a six on the site. Like, that's a, that's a fine game. Yeah. It's like, just, mm, four mediocre games. Right, there's no, there's no bangers for either console in August. No. The Lost Planet 3 always kind of looked like Dead Space, like a little Dead Space influence, but with mechs. It did, yeah. I remember right. that. And I'm such a mech guy, too, and even I'm kind of like, eh, pass. That first I mean, Lost Planet, CB, though. If CB says mechs or eh, that's a sign. CB, you gotta play Xenogears. All about mechs. I, I, I have Xenogears. Oh. You own, oh, of course you own it. <laughs> it's, it's it's unfortunately just hit that like permanent backlog, which I'm I'm trying to get through some of it. You can use your mech to kill God in that game. Well, anyway, I guess uh, we've we've chatted up the very little news. So that's fine because we got a lot of we got a lot of games to talk about. Uh, but first, CB, why don't you uh, why don't you take us through our our Patreon offerings here? Well, as most know, we are an independently funded podcast, uh, which means we must pay for podcast hosting services, a website. We do it all on our own, uh, which is why we have a Patreon page for fans to contribute monthly to help offset those costs. Uh, Sometimes say it's nice, Uh, as well as give back to the community, which we love also doing since we are very community driven. Uh, If you'd like to help out, you can do so at patreon.com slash the go cast. Uh, no new Patreon, I uh, no new patrons this month, but uh, tiers start at three dollars, and they kind of go up from there. I mean, you can get one extra episode or two, depending on where you sit. Um, most recently, we have a uh, a look back at an NES game, which I'm still kind of mad that I didn't get to chill with you guys for that one. But Bill Elliott's NASCAR Challenge. I know I was there in spirit, but. You can see a fun reveal of how uh, the first game I ever played held up in my eyes. Oh. So, there's that. Uh, and then, also, you guys uh, made me even more sad with making video game music with Grant Henry. One of my favorite humans to talk to. Yeah, it turns I've never out met Grant... Grant, so I'm sad, too. Mm. Well, maybe you will on the uh, Game of the Year episode. Oh. Oh, that is true. Because he's our... Ooh, man. Just realized that's going to be a... That is going to be a heavy episode. Four people plus Grant. Yeah, I mean, if we pull it off. No promises. No promises here. I th- I'm also just intrigued because I don't think there's any truly standout game so far this year that is like an obvious front runner. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong. I mean, I well, can think of two that I just, I really enjoyed. <laughs> Well, I can, I can think of, I, I can think of my games of the year. I'm just saying, there's no like, yeah. like you could see that Ghost of Tsushima, you know, was was inching towards the front when it came out and stuff like that. Or the Last of Us Part Two. 
There's no well, that game's there's we don't have that game this year. Maybe not for you, but there may be one for me. I understand. I'm saying I can't predict what our list is going to be. That's what I'm saying. That's true. They can change. True. Uh, wait, wait, yeah, you can sign up at patreon.com slash gocast, but we will... Let's talk about the games we've actually been playing. Right before we talk about the games we've been playing, we do got to talk about the games that are coming out. Uh, as, as I just mentioned, Hunter's Arena Legends coming to PS5 and PS4 August 3rd. As uh, we mentioned, that it'll be a PlayStation Plus freebie, so if you are a me- subscriber, snatch it up because it costs you nothing. Dragonstar Varnir is an interesting JRPG about witches where you can like ride your brooms during combat, so elevation plays a role. It seemed kind of cool. Coming to Switch August 3rd. Uh, psychological thriller game in sound mine coming to ps5 xbox series consoles switch and pc august 3rd uh the latest in the dungeon dungeon defenders franchise dungeon defenders awaken hits switch august 4th the falconeer which is a game i always hear the name of and have no idea what it actually really is other than a uh bird combat game it's coming to ps5 ps4 and switch august 5th and then I Am Dead hits PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, and Xbox One August 9th. Uh, guys, great week for the backlog, wouldn't you say? I was going to say yeah. that, yeah. Yep. Um, I've played the Falconeer already. It's okay. Right, it's been on Xbox so long that I had assumed it was already on PlayStation, but mm-hmm. I guess I was wrong. Yeah, it's... I got bored really quick with it. The, the controls are not that great, so... Um, yeah, it's backlog week for me. Yeah, I think I feel like I'm gonna try Hunter's Arena Legends, and uh, I don't know the shame. The shame of those kind of multiplayer games, like with that dodgeball game that came out a few, you know, a couple months ago, is like even if I like it, I'm not gonna play it because I feel like I can't devote my time to multiplayer games. It is hard to do. Every hour of multiplayer game is an hour I'm not getting to play a narrative video game. Also, I feel like I'm being judged when I play multiplayer games. Yes, <laughs> so I'm uh, scared. <laughs> it's just you have the anxiety of uh, keep performing for your teammates. It's like I gotta be good. No, I messed up. They're gonna hate me now. <laughs> oh yeah, I am. Yeah. Well, luckily, I think that's mostly it's. So it's thirty players into a combat arena, and then everybody's fending for themselves. So you're just you just have to worry about you, Alyssa. I still worry about what people think of me <laughs> in multiplayer games. <laughs> You're probably better than me, so... No, I, I'm bad at them. If there's not a shotgun and it's not super fast-paced, I'm not going to be good. Wow, this got sad. Why don't we talk about something <laughs> happy? <laughs> See the uh, Microsoft Fight Simulator from developer Sobo of a Plague Tale franchise, which is always interesting, uh, finally made its way to Xbox, and you played it. Tell me, did you fly past your house? I did. I crashed into it. Yeah, well, that's what you deserve. Moving on, now the CV no longer has a home. <laughs> <laughs> now, how, how uh, is it, man? How does it look on consoles? Because on PC, it looks almost unbelievable. It looks stellar. Um, when you're flying around, it looks shockingly real. That being said, if you dip below 100 feet, mm-hmm. um, the graphics take a hard turn and suddenly look really bad. Because you can't just model all of the cities? No. Like, you, you get really close. Like, from, from a distance, everything looks beautiful. Like, because you're flying. It, that's how it's meant to be. Just like me. You, I look beautiful from a distance. And as you get closer, the reality starts to set in. Oh, you're beautiful up front. Thanks. Yeah, you're always beautiful, Zach. All right, settle down now. <laughs> um... No, man, this game is a uh, front runner for me for game of the year. Really? But by, by the way, are you still playing it? Yes. Can you fly to my house and send me a screenshot? <laughs> yes, yes I can. Uh surprisingly, I have a list of people that have been sending me like, "Can you fly by my house and screenshot it?" Wow, so, I will I will fine. add you to the list. Thank you. I want to see what my house looks like in this game. Um for, it won't probably look like your house, I will tell you that. Okay. Because my house, it's like generic model house number four. 
but uh you can you can kind of tell from the air like where your house would be um there there's a like a grass grass uh airfield uh f- about 10 minutes from my house and I took off from there and kind of followed the streets because the the map the maps of the streets are really really accurate so I just kind of followed the path that I would take to get to my house and I'm like oh yeah and there it is but like you'll fly over Walmart and like you can't tell it's just like big box building right uh, well, you, can't, you don't want to pay for that license <laughs> no but here's the funny thing I flew to Orlando um Disney World you, you can tell it's you can tell it's Disney World like the Epcot ball is there you can see Cinderella's castle uh I actually landed in Disney World and then immediately flipped my plane over and took a <laughs> screenshot um but I, I've flown a bun- around a bunch of the monuments. Uh, I flew through Paris just because I got really familiar with the city streets over there. Uh, I've flown around L.A. Uh, I did. I even did some multiplayer with it. Uh, I flew around with our producer Nate Lucas, and even multiplayer. This game is a riot. What do you What do you do in multiplayer? Just just fly around together? Yeah, we just wingman. Uh, we were on comms with each other and just. Flying around and doing dumb stuff with planes. Who was Maverick? Who was Goose? <clears throat> um, I don't think either one of us flew that well. We're just <laughs> kind of doing dumb things. Uh, but man, it's it's such a relaxing game. Uh, the the flight controls handle beautifully. Uh, I know this is going to be a turnoff for a lot of people, but everything is real timed. There is no speed up option. So if you want to fly from here oh, okay. to Paris, oh, okay. That's... it'll take you eight and a half hours. I'm can not take, kidding. Can you take off from different airports, though? To Any airport in the world. Okay, okay. And I mean any airport in the world. Rockford I, Airport? Uh, the, yep. I fly out of that one fairly often in this game. Wow. Um, that's kind of yeah, cool. Well, you, you've been to Rockford. Do you, have, you know Cottonwood Airport? I mean, vaguely. Over off, over off Auburn Street, that little grass airport yeah. field. You can do that? You can take off from there. It's really hard to do in a 747, by the way. Uh, you don't have enough room. I was going to say, I don't know if you have enough <laughs> runway. Um, but one of, the, one of the things that's really amazing about this game is you can, you can fly in third-person view or first-person view. And the striking attention to detail that is paid to the cockpits of these planes is astonishing. Um, one of the achievements was to start up an Airbus A320 from a cold start. So you literally have to go through your checklist, be like, check battery, turn on fuel pumps, switch. And it, it's one of the achievements. It took me a good 15 minutes to do the startup for this plane. Is it, is it annoying to do with the controller? <clears throat> Uh, yes and no. Um, so you actually have to push down on one of the thumbsticks to go to a cursor mode to like, go like, okay, point to this switch, click the switch. Okay. Uh, it's even a little harder Do, doing the first person stuff in the cockpit is a little harder with, cause I'm actually using either a controller or a HOTAS. So my flight. Oh stick. yes, that's right. You invested. Yes, I did. Um, flying a plane with the Hotas, wonderful. Doing the first person stuff, nightmare. <laughs> I have a question. What's a Hotas? A uh, Hotas flight stick. So it's um, the traditional uh, like flight stick that you see, and then a throttle, and okay. then it's got a bunch of buttons on it. Uh, I even went as far to order the foot pedals for the rudder steering. Well, you're, going, you're going steel battalion on this game. Yes, I I love flight simulators, and so when they originally announced that this was coming to Xbox, like console, uh, I was like day one in, and I've put close to twenty four hours into this game already. Oh wow! Wow! So I've done a, a whole lot day. Of fly- yeah, a lot of flying. Imagine that, CB. That a uh, simu- the act of simulating planes in real time. So eight hours in the air is more satisfying to you than Skyward Sword. Yes, that that tells you something. <laughs> it's it's, it's just it's it's very peaceful. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I can just, see that. Like it, it's it's very hard to describe, but like as you're, um, 
one of the, I, I have a screenshot. I should post it on the the Facebook and the Discord. But I was flying through the Australian outback, so it's just all like scrub and everything. But as the sun was coming up, oh wow! Because e- even the day night cycle in this, you can leave it to real world. That's pretty cool. I like that. It is. And not even not only that, but the weather. Wow. So you can you can fly into hurricanes in this game through thunderstorms fog it's all it's all there i wonder how terrible this will look on my base xbox one uh well if you have game pass you can try it oh uh, the author report back but i i think this is one of the it, it it is the best flight simulator that i have ever played I mean, so i feel like that makes sense yeah presumably uh, you would and, only get better as time goes on yeah i mean it it's just it's staggering and they're they're doing constant updates for it already uh they're already like patching in like to make the graphics look better adding more monuments and landmarks like f- taking a little Cessna 150 and like flying around the pyramid uh pyramids of Giza was insane okay man now you really now you kind of really <laughs> trip my trigger here it, it's dude it's beautiful um my my wife actually sat down and watched me play this for like an hour. Wow. And she hates games. Right. But flying flying around like Paris at night when the Eiffel Tower's all lit up and the city's all lit up, it's gorgeous. Oh, I may fly around Tokyo. Woof. I gotta download this. Oh, I was oh, gonna yeah. say Tokyo. Yeah. See like we're yeah. of like minds. Um, it's it's definitely on my list. Uh Las Vegas looks really good too. Okay. So but yeah, it is it is a beautiful, beautiful sight to behold. So uh I highly recommend it. If you have Game Pass, just download this game and try it. You don't need a Hotas. It's it's fairly easy to do with just the controller. Um I'm going to be going as far as I'm going to be buying the deluxe edition. Even even though I do get it free through yeah, Game Pass what, because what is, Yeah, what does the deluxe do? Uh you get additional planes. That you can fly they because are. it comes with it comes with a base set of planes. Okay. Do they have do they have fighter planes in the base set? Like military? Uh no. Okay. I was just asking. Um there's there's a couple like World War II fighters that you can purchase. Okay. Uh, they aren't cheap. Um uh, the the P I think it's the P forty was is twenty four dollars. Oh with real money? Oh wow. Yeah. Oh it's real money. Um but the deluxe edition, if you buy it, you get additional 10 aircrafts, but also it improves the graphic settings for the airports, too. So, like, the, it makes O'Hare legitimately look exactly like O'Hare. Interesting. So, uh, um, but yeah, I've, I've been downloading stuff for it. Uh, there's this stupid plane that I bought. It's, it's um, like, take a, take a, like, a river rapids like tube yeah like the like people go rafting on like a six person tube and attach a hang glider to it and a motor uh i downloaded that it was it was a couple bucks and man that thing flies awful does it is it based <laughs> on real like a real plane technology is it a real thing yeah every every plane is, is a legitimate plane that somebody has built at some point in time Honestly, can you fly the terrifying can you fly the right brothers plane <laughs> Uh, I believe there is one in the game or something similar to it. Uh, I don't know if it's the exact same model, but give give it time. I'm willing to bet they're going to put it in this game because they're adding new content to this thing already. Aren't they um having a Top Gun Maverick pack coming? Yep. In November. Can't wait. I will be there day one. Your, I will spend all the dollars. From my understanding, one of your top three. It is. It is definitely uh, up there for one of my top three favorite films of all time. So I don't know what planes are going to include in the pack, but as long as the F-14 is there, uh, I will I will take my dollars and throw it at them. Understood. Wow. I wasn't expecting such a strong reaction, but you're right. I mean, there's no... It's actually kind of a perfect Game Pass game because I can't imagine a lot of people want to pay $60 to fly the planes, but... If it's just part of your subscription, like why wouldn't you just download it, fly around your hometown or whatever? I'm willing to bet there's going to be a ton of people buying this game. Yeah, but I think I think Game Pass is going to facilitate a lot of those purchases. Yes. Yeah. Uh, bar none. And 
if if you have a Series X, man, this uh, like I said, this game looks gorgeous in 4K. Finally, Xbox gets an exclusive. Yep, that they do. All right. So. Well, change change the gears here. We've heard enough out of you, CB. Uh, Alyssa, you've been playing Nightbook. I have been. Is this uh, the latest FMV adventure you've experienced? It is, yes. Okay. Uh, tell us, is this is this from one of those companies that just knocks these things out? I believe so. I think their previous game was Made of Skur. Made of Skur? That's how you pronounce Ooh. May of scare, yeah. Yeah, may of scare. That that one wasn't so much FMV, but no. I I know the company fairly well, so I'm 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 kind of curious to see your reactions to this game because it's depending on what you say is whether or not I'm going to buy this. Well, this was it's very cinematic. It's, there's not a ton of gameplay, but it's so incredibly well done. I was seriously scared, but I do get scared by demonic possession, which is a part of this story and there's 15 different endings over 200 scenes you can watch and you are just watching like through this woman's desktop computer the whole time she's pregnant she's working as an interpreter and her dad's in her apartment but he's locked in a back room and he's constantly pounding on the wall screaming and you know people think he's just sick and they're like give him sedatives but he says there's something going on of course a book comes into the equation, which you never read from the book, but of course they do. And your story just goes on from there. And the story changes depending on what choices you make. You can choose two different storylines and see how they connect. And I highly advise playing at least twice through because you can see the threads connecting. I just think the acting was great. The choices you had to make aren't clear cut, so you never know if you're doing the right thing or not. I like that. That's cool. I always like when it's a little it, amb- ambiguity. It, 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 it almost sounds like they're blending um, the game Telling Lies with uh, like other FMV. I've never played Telling Lies, but I have heard that comparison be made about this game. Okay. But I loved it, and it is very short. My first playthrough, I t- think, took about an hour. After that, um, you can skip through scenes you've previously watched, so you don't have to rewatch them again. So each subsequent playthrough will be shorter. So it's super easy just to play through it, and it does have a content warning before you even start playing. It warns you about adult themes in the game that might not be suitable for everyone. Yeah. Talk about gaming. Yeah, Scott's gone, guys. We get to play. <laughs> um, did, did you ever play the the inf- uh, the infectious madness of Doctor Decker? I have not, but when once I played um, Dark Knights with Poe and Monroe, I really do want to play that game now. Oh yeah, you really need to play that game. It's, a, it's that good, huh? I I still love it just because it it sounds very much like this. But it's very Lovecraftian. So, those that's a that's a uh, happy trigger word for me. Yes. Well, just like the the moment uh, Alyssa said uh, demonic possession, I'm like, oh, I'm in. Do, give me the things. It's all it takes. I mean, I'll from read an, the book. Yeah, especially from a book. Was this Evil Dead? What's going on here? It does have Evil Dead vibes, and I did nearly drop my controller a couple times because it jump scared me. <laughs> And I was actually playing the game, and my dad walked into the house. I wasn't expecting him. I'm like, oh my god! Just like the um, dad in the game. <laughs> That's true. So, sorry, guys, you're gonna have to do the podcast by yourselves for the rest of the show. I'm I'm gonna go play this. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it does. It does uh, seem like right up your alley. <laughs> I really, really loved it. I I think you would love it too, CB. If you liked mm. that kind of game, so. And the funny thing is, my. Our, my review, my written review, is 666 words. I wasn't even trying to make it that length. It just happened. It's telling you something. I did, know. You, did you read the book? The character did twice. <laughs> At least. She made them I suffer. I played it more than that, but, you know. Wow, you played it one twice? Yeah, I wanted to see what happened, but wow, that's, with that's the two a... different storylines, she reads it twice in different scenarios, and then you skip past it. With the other playthroughs, that's just a very well, high recommendation if you if you keep replaying it. 
It is. I. I mean, it's addictive. You just want to find out how the different endings are going to happen. What happens if people are safe? If they're not, it's just it's really interesting, and it doesn't take long to replay it. I haven't gotten all the endings yet, but I've gotten several, some better than others. All right. But it adds to the horror feel. So if you like horror films, if it be games, you want a combination of the two, you want something to scare you, I definitely recommend it. But like all my all my trigger words. You say you sold one <laughs> copy, that's for sure. Yes. All right, man. The that was sinker. That was Nightbook. You played that on? Did you play that on Xbox consoles? I did play on Xbox. All right. Let's keep the Xbox train rolling. CB, you've been playing Skydrift Infinity. Yeah. Um, do you do you like Mario Kart? You know, it's funny you ask because I actually really don't. But okay. I like the idea of I like Mario Kart sixty four. How about that? Okay. Do you like flying planes? I love them. Smash it together. Diddy Kong Racing. You been playing that? No. <laughs> um. Uh, so Skydrift Infinity, uh, it's uh, arcade style racer with power ups and planes. All right. Yeah. Sold. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds um, so cool. It. it uh, it's really kind of hard to like talk about a game like this because it, it, it's it's such an easy formula. It, you're you're flying planes. You get power ups. You shoot other guys. You can do. There's a campaign mode and there's multiplayer and there's leaderboards. Um, the it's it's kind of got your generic power ups. Uh, you got missiles, guns, and and you actually have to fly through, pick them up, use them. They're one shots. Then pick them up again as you go around the track. Um, but yeah, like missiles, guns, uh, a shield, a shockwave. Uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, a health regen. Yeah, you're right. It's just kind of like, yeah, Mario Kart with planes is really all you need to say. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's definitely kind of hard to expound upon that. Like, the the flight, yeah, it's it's not too bad. Uh, it, after playing something like My, Microsoft Flight Simulator and, like, switching to an arcade-style flight like this, it feels so awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've had a real plain week. Yeah, because uh, you because you go from flying these like wonderfully taken care of planes that like feather beautifully turn to like this ha- like very harsh flight mechanic where it's just a- almost like bumper cars just plow through it hard turns. Uh, it looks good. It's it's not bad. I don't know how much more I'm gonna keep playing it. Um. But it it definitely would be fun playing this with friends. Yeah. Well, I mean, much like Mario Kart is not fun alone either. Yes. So, um, I I think I would be utterly frustrated because I haven't done any of the online component with this yet. I think I would be utterly frustrated playing this online with people, just because I can't just imagine like hearing a bunch of people being like scrub as I'm trying to fly a plane <laughs> and shoot them. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's a fun little game. Uh especially if you like arcade racers. Um I really did like Diddy Kong Racing a lot and and outside of the facetiousness that, that was a Mario Kart game but with planes, so that does kind of sound exciting. Yeah. So uh, would I recommend it? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's it is kind of a new take on an old formula. I do uh, I do like when someone not Nintendo does one of these. Like you remember Blur? Yeah. It was mm-hmm. like street race car like street race real cars, but with power ups. That was a fun game too. It, it it very much does feel like Nintendo almost does have a monopoly on this style of game. Yeah. Because with is... like Mario Kart and like Diddy Kong Racing. It it doesn't feel like too many other people do the set track with power ups. Yeah, which is yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah, there's got to be some free to play money in that, right? Yeah, I'm really willing to bet. Like, may, maybe that's the next big thing. Instead of another round of battle royales, we're gonna go back to power up kart racers. Well, Nintendo could just shut the whole thing down with Mario Mario Kart Infinite. Then you're done. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, they did do Mario Kart Live. I still play that. Uh, well, that's a fun on the phone, right? Uh, no, that's the with the the actual RC cars. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was cool. That seemed cool. Yeah. Well, still waiting for them to do more RC cars for that too. Is it, is it just Mario and Luigi still? Yeah, there there was rumors that they're going to be doing other characters, and I have yet to see them. It feels like Peach and Bowser would be a kind of a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. Peach Bowser, I would love a Dry Bones one. Sure that that might be that might be wishful thinking. Or Boo, give me Boo. I understand why I understand why you want these characters to be, but like Dry Bones is a pretty that's a pretty niche appeal. <laughs> yeah, but that that's how I am. I understand, uh, and I do. So that's Skydrift Infinity on Xbox, uh, which you which you do recommend. Yes. Uh, I want to, before I get any comments, I don't, I don't hate Mario Kart. I just hate that it's the only thing anybody ever wants to play on Switch. I'll clear that up. Whenever you get a group together, if you want to play Mario Kart. It's always Mario Kart, Mario Party, or Smash Brothers. I would take Smash. That's true. One day I gotta buy that or, game. Or if you're uh, Scott Clark, it's always Killer Queen Black. <laughs> I mean, that game's cool, <laughs> man. You don't get a lot of opportunities to play it, though. You need the, you need the numbers. Yes, yes, you do. To me, Mario Kart is like, once you've done the tracks, you know, four times each, you're like, I get it. Yeah. Anyway, that's my party. Now, moving on to the next game, my dear Zach, mm -hmm. I know, I knew you were going to play this game, but you have been playing Nier Reincarnation, which this is the mobile Nier game. Tell us about it. Right. Oh, great one of the Nier oh my God. universe. The the, the preacher of near guys you keep you guys are really oh, you make me cry with those kind of compliments <laughs> so my very dream real has been realized uh yeah this i mean this is uh yeah near's mobile game uh this is the first like this is a yoko taro joint which is very exciting kj okabe is back for the music uh yosuke saito's producing it's the whole it's the whole team so it's very exciting it feels like a real deal entry and you know what? I'll be darned if it's not pretty compelling. I know this is a, you expected this answer that I would like this game. We did, uh, it's, so it is a gotcha, um, which I assume everybody knows, but if not, it's a game where it's designed around you pulling random characters and weapons out of gotcha pulls using in-game currency or whatever. And you, and you only, and the idea is that you will burn through your gems faster than you will get the characters you want. So you're incentivized to spend money. So there is that. I just want to say that up top. Uh, however, uh, what differentiates this is that it has like some actual narrative stuff. Like they, so he plays this little girl who wakes up in a uh, a place called the Cage, which is just uh, like some kind of like I guess you would call it like a dreamscape almost. And it's a bit like a walking simulator, but like third person at first. Then it actually does kind of incorporate some puzzles and stuff. Which you would not expect for a mobile game, I feel like, especially one of the gotcha variety. And you and you counter this uh, character named Mama, and she's like a little ghost helper. She's talks to you very sweetly, which I'm sure because it's Yoko Taro, she'll probably murder me or something, <laughs> <laughs> or commit a genocide. But anyway, right now she's very sweet and nice. And your goal is you you go around to these little uh, scarecrows, and when you interact with them, you get pulled into a 2D Almost like, uh, almost looks like a pop-up book art style, and it turns into a side scroller where you play through, and it's narrated by the character whoever's playing it, and you walk through there, and then you have to engage in some combats because your your goal is to you're exploring people's memories, but you want to keep the stories on track, so you have to basically fight off invading forces who want to ruin the stories, um, and that and that's where the turn-based combat kind of comes into play. But it's um, but uh, you know, so you you yeah, you played near. You know those weapon. You know how when you upgrade your weapons, you get weapon stories. Yes. It is you're basically playing through weapon stories. Okay. They're each broken into four parts, and they're short form narratives. And you get in, meet a character, um, in a side scroll, or it just it looks very beautiful, and especially with the music and everything, it's pretty great. Um, and and yeah, you just kind of explore short stories and then yeah, the the combat is it is like a turn-based uh jrpg but it's 
um, a little, I would say it's quite simple compared to most. Um, and that's, uh, you know, th that's probably good. The best thing you can do for mobile, right? You don't want it to be too complex or else you wouldn't really. Yeah. But the game is actually kind of already asking a lot of you as a mobile player for the story sections because each one takes probably like 10 minutes, which, you know, is not really conducive to playing while you're waiting in line at the grocery store, you know? Uh, is, and, but I mean, it's, it's a, it's a lot of fun. There's not, if you're, if you are curious, I guess if you want to play this for the Draken near connections, there are not a lot so far. But if you're way into Dragon Guard, you'll be very excited that they have mentioned the flowers at several points, which is a big, which is a big deal. So I'm curious to see how it connects back. Although Yoko Taro said it only connects because Square Enix makes more money that way, which <laughs> is a perfect Yoko Taro answer. I do have a question: okay. the characters you get in the Gotcha Bones are they characters we already know, or are they brand new characters or Great. a mix? Great question. So, uh, so during launch until September seventh, um, it is it does have an automatic crossover, and with that you can just by doing the it has like daily quests for the crossover, and just by doing those you can get two B nine S and A two as they look from uh, from Automata, but only through the Gacha pulls can you get their new kind of sexier looks that are exclusive to reincarnation. Ooh. Which is good, and they're also stronger that way. They're the four star variety instead of the three star. I do have a two, which is very exciting. Um, but outside of that, these are all brand new characters from the short stories. Like my main okay. right, my main right now is a guy named Demos, who he's a freaking android gunslinger who's got bandages all over his face, and he talks in like a semi robotic voice. But he's friggin' awesome. the The first two short stories were amazing. Uh, very Yoko Taro, uh, which is which is great, and yeah, I, I'm curious to see how the like exploration thing goes because it seems uh, there there's more than you would think going on for a mobile game. Like it almost when you're exploring the cage, it almost it feels like a console game where you're walking around and it's beautiful and there's like a lot of like there's a lot of narrative stuff happening and it's uh it's just like super weird. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's I Yoko Taro, expect. so... Right, that's what we should expect from the franchise. Uh, but, but like, the music, especially, the, like, the battle music is absolutely beautiful. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, no surprise there coming from Kiichi Okabe. Uh, yeah, definitely play it with headphones if you're going to play it. But, yeah, I'll try not to talk about it all the time uh, on the show. But it's, uh, it's, it's really exciting to have... I have Daily Near now, you know? Like, that's pretty cool. That's extreme! <laughs> right, right, absolutely, and there there are a lot of like combat focused quests and stuff. But the idea of like this mobile game that's being supported by the gacha money, you know, that is usually in these kind of things. But then also it has a short story. Like you could just add a short story every few months or whatever. Like this is a pretty cool system. And if you are an Automata fan, the crossover going on right now has a has a two B and nine S short story that if if you're into their romance is pretty. Pretty top notch. I gotta play this game now. Yeah, I mean, there's really there's no reason not to, right? Like, uh, I haven't had to spend money yet, although I might have. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> um, but it hasn't really necessitated it yet. the The only reason I have, like, and uh, each character has like, right? They have like star ratings, two, three, or four stars. But when you get the rare versions, which is typical for this kind of mobile game, because you know, you waste your time on a three-star version of a character, then you get the four-star, and you're like, well, great, I just wasted all my resources on this lower version. But at least in this one, they have a different costume, based on the rarity. Which is cool. There's also an angry old guy who <laughs> looks a lot like Nier, and he sounds like him, too, and it's really exciting for me. Papa Nier. Oh, Papa Nier. <laughs> yeah, and my understanding is in Japan, they had a Nier Gestalt replicant crossover where that guy gets a Papa Nier outfit oh, you can so wear. Cool. So that would be... Hoping for that to come to English soon. Japan gets all the cool stuff. Uh, yes, they really do. Especially the near stuff. Yeah. Square Enix has their own book division now in North America. Get to translating, guys. Stop wasting my time. Let me buy a grimoire near in English. Yes. Don't make me buy it twice in Japanese, like I already did. <laughs> <laughs> Jerks. Uh, but anyway... That's your reincarnation. I recommend it absolutely. Um, but I but 
It was probably a safe bet that I was going to anyway. Although I will counter that Yokotaro has another mobile game, Sino Alice, and I don't think that game's very good at all. I didn't know so he I'm had not another just, one. It's like a fairy tale thing. I wouldn't play okay. it, Alyssa. It doesn't... Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not tied into the Draconir universe, but it's also just, like, kind of cheaply made. And it really wants... That game really wants your money. But anyway, sorry, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stop talking about Nier now. We'll, we'll transition into a couple of pre-recorded interviews. Uh, we have Rel talking about Dreamscaper, and we have Josh Urshman talking about Urban Trial Tricky Deluxe Edition. Quite a title. Well, hey there, Rel. Long time no see. I haven't seen you since uh, last week. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. It's been it a while. It's been a while, man. Oh, man, don't do that. Don't do that. You can't do that here. <laughs> <laughs> a little stained action. Anyway, you were here not to wax philosophical on, uh, you know, early 2000s metal bands that do, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that do uh, ballads, but you're here to talk to us about a game called Dreamscaper from Afterburner Studios, which was provided to us by Stride PR. I am intrigued by this game because uh, I love me some roguelike games, and this one looks like it's got that isometric view. But you're going to have to tell me what this is because I just really can't gather what it is from the trailer. So think Hades with a little binding of Isaac sprinkled on top. Oh my goodness, you're speaking our language because Zach is obsessed with Hades and Chris is currently playing through Binding of Isaac, which I love. So, all right, keep, keep talking, man. So the premise of the game is you play as Cassidy who moves to a new city and either has dreams because reasons or she's actually attempting to have lucid dreams but basically she's trying to work through her psychological issues by beating the crap out of them in her dreams oh that's actually a really great premise yeah i thought so too um the reason i say binding of isaac is because it uses the same isometric kind of not really top down kind of three-quarter view uh sort of zelda-esque maze system Mm -hmm. As opposed to Hades, which uh, you clear a room, you choose a, a reward for the next room, and you go on to the next room. This is more right. like, you know, you, you find your way to the item room, you find your way to the boss, uh, kill said boss, go down to the next level. All right, so far I'm sold, so keep going. So the thing that I really like about this game, aside from the fact that it's uh, it's pretty neat in concept, is also the fact that it has... A wider variety of weapons than Hades, which only had six, and granted in that one you also had the various aspects that gave the weapons uh, a little unique flavor. Uh, but in this one, in Dreamscaper, you can use like a baseball bat, you can use a yo-yo, Cloud's Buster Sword, Katana, uh, nice. your fists, you know, just every anything and everything. Likewise, you have special powers that you can use, you can have a variety of ranged weapons, elemental damage uh and a lot of quality of life features that i think need to be present in other roguelikes such as so you do have to like beat a boss at the end of each stage but if you want to you can skip said boss skip S just like press a button and skip the boss press a button and skip the boss it does come with consequences, but you can choose to just simply not fight the boss and go down to the next floor. But you're missing out on a bunch of rewards as well, aren't you? Isn't that like kind of the fun of a roguelike, is beating the boss and getting all the really cool loot? Correct. Pretty much every boss drops an item that boosts your max health and gives you uh, like some other statistical benefits, uh, as well as like you know health potion and uh like currency all that kind of thing so it's absolutely worth it to beat the boss but if you think that you can't beat the boss or like you know you have really low health you're definitely gonna die but maybe you won't on the next floor you can just decide okay we're gonna skip it go down to the next floor uh you sacrifice uh some difficulty modifier stuff if you happen to be using that but it's a really neat thing um and I should mention, the combat is more Hades than Binding of Isaac. It's much more uh, beat-em-up style. But if you think Hades is a little too fast-paced, for instance, uh, Dreamscaper is a little slower and more deliberate. 
Not like super slow or anything, but it's definitely a little bit more forgiving than Hades. Okay, and then I know that a lot of people hear Binding of Isaac and they immediately go to piles of poop. <laughs> Is there any piles of poop? No. In this game. No, right, there, <laughs> no it does not use the, the, the squick type gross out stuff that the Binding of Isaac has. It's mostly just uh, the level layout. Like, I remember playing through it uh, in one particular run and thinking, huh, this is kind of laid out like Binding of Isaac. I wonder if they have secret rooms kind of like the, uh, how the Binding of Isaac generates them. Oh, they do. Okay. Because, like, you also... So there's, like, bombs and things like yeah, that? Yeah, exactly. It has bombs and keys, and some rooms are blocked off by uh, locks, and some rooms need to be bombed open, and you can find secret rooms and puzzle rooms and uh, challenge rooms and all kinds of things once you unlock them in the waking world because that's the other aspect of the game once you get knocked out of the dream because you never actually die it's a dream uh you can go into the waking world go into various locations like the park a cafe record store etc meet people present them with gifts have conversations with them that unlocks other permanent stuff you can uh, use currency that you gather in the dream to unlock other permanent stuff. So it's very much Hades in terms of the permanent unlocks, story progression, and the gradual building of relationships with the game's various NPCs. I am sold on this game, man. I mean, you told me two games that I already like. And, and just, I don't know, this is a game I have to play. Uh, I assume you're going to recommend it for everybody to check out? I would absolutely recommend it if you're a fan of Hades. Uh... Binding of Isaac depends on if you like absolutely need to have, you know, that same sort of like shooter shmup type of thing because it's a little bit less of a shmup than Binding of Isaac is. But yeah, I would absolutely recommend it. It's very very good. Uh, I still have a lot more to unlock, and I've gotten pretty deep into the game. It's currently available for twenty five dollars American on Steam, and I believe it is going to be yep for Nintendo Switch as well. It's also on Epic as well, so if you're uh, tied to that platform as well, you can play it there. So, mm -hmm. Dreamskeeper sounds awesome, and maybe it may be a game that I need to I need to check out because, uh, man, I love me some Binding of Isaac. And watching CB play it recently has made me want to get back into that. So maybe this will be the route I go instead of going backwards, going forwards. So, Ralph, thanks so much for checking this out. I know that you are gonna you've done a, a YouTube video for this as well. Where can everybody check that out? They can find that at my channel at youtube.com slash relplays. That's R-E-L-L-E -L -L -E plays. Awesome, man. Looking forward to checking this out. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks for having me. All right, we'll catch you later. Later. Hey, everybody. This is Chris Barron's Fire. We have a special pre-recorded uh, interview here with Mr. Josh Ershman. How you doing, Josh? I'm doing well. Good, good. Uh, you've been playing a little game for us called... Uh, Trial Tricky? Urban. I, Urban Trial Tricky. Yep. Uh, so I, I actually haven't really had a lot of experience with this game, but I was looking at the trailer and it kind of reminds me a lot of a lot of the Trials games that are out there. Yep. But just a little more cartoony. Kind of yeah, fill me in. Yeah, it's definitely a lot more cartoony. Uh, the old Trial games where they were like super precise, this definitely gives you a lot more leeway. Um, instead of just trying to complete a track, now it's more about uh, doing different kinds of tricks on your motorcycle uh, and getting combos. And the more combos you get, the higher your score. And um, levels are really short. They're like, I usually get like 30 seconds and most of the maps are really, really small. Okay. But, that, but that's good. I mean, you can flip your bike either way. So in, on normal trial games, you can only go one way. On this game, you can actually do 180 and go either way on the map. Okay. So is is it more or less just trying to get to like a certain point level? Or Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's three different modes in single player. Um, there's timed events, which are just like race as fast as you can to the end. There's trick mode where... Um, it'll ask you to just, it's freestyle, do as many tricks as you possibly can. And then competition mode where, um, as you're racing along, it'll ask you to perform a trick. And if you perform a trick, it gives you bonus points. Okay. Very nice. 
Um, so, I mean, I've, I've played a lot of, uh, Trials Rising, uh, unfortunately that was like my first real foray into the trial style games. So, I mean, is there, other than the cartoony feel and like the short tracks and it based sim- solely on tricks, I mean, is there anything else that really sets this one apart from the other ones? I, I know there's like, there's like leaderboards and stuff like that, just like with the other ones. Um, you get a... You're definitely, it's a lot more forgiving than other trial games. Other trial games, if you, you know, barely, if you don't land correctly, you'll completely wipe out. On this one, I mean, I've landed upside down on my head multiple times, and it still lets me flip my bike back around and finish my trick. Okay. It also has witty humor, too, which I really like. So, um, like, there's, like, lots of customization in the game. Um, You get, like, you have four different bikes. Um, what else is there? There's 17 different costumes. Um, my personal favorite is the banana suit. <laughs> okay. I mean, a little bit of cheeky humor there, so. Yeah, there's like wrestling combo. There's like wrestling suits, ones that makes you look like a shrimp. Um, just like standard motorcycle helmet gear. Uh, the bikes I noticed haven't made a huge difference. Uh, they're just like different styles. Um, but they have like lots of different color customization, which is really cool. Okay. So if you want to look look a specific way, you can, which is nice. I can always appreciate that a little bit. I mean, I, I do like that it seems to be giving a little bit more to the, mm-hmm. uh, I guess, vanity side of me. Yeah. Uh, it So it, like in the beginning, it only gives you like one or two tricks. So like doing like Superman... Or doing soldiers, so you like salute as you jump off a uh, thing. There's three different kinds of trick styles of tricks. You can do air tricks, um, wheelie tricks, and then stoppy tricks. So like when you're stopping and slamming on your brakes. Okay. Um, it has really good control. I've been playing with my controller because I tried with my mouse and keyboard and wanted to throw my keyboard through my monitor. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. I wouldn't, um, wouldn't recommend that. Yeah, it it does give you, so, like, as you're doing the campaign, um, it gives you, like, stop, like, small courses in between that are, like, that'll learn new tricks. So it's usually, it's actually just a few button combos. You would think that's easy, but sometimes it doesn't recognize your button combo sometimes. I'm guessing you can relate to that, any kind of game where asking, like, hold Y and hit X. And then, like, it's very finicky when you're trying to press that and trying to flip your oh. motorcycle upside down. Yeah, I mean, ho- hopefully there's not too many that, like, hold A and then cross two buttons to hit Y. Yeah, luckily there's nothing like that. There is spots where you can get stuck um, on the course or you, like, sometimes I have, like, a super big combo going and then my guy goes and slams his head into a building and I kill my combo of, like, 20. Which that's just crushing. Yeah, I, I, I can relate. I, I, uh, there's, there's another game that I played, uh, the Descenders, which yep. you can get utterly brutalized in that for doing dumb things sometimes. Uh, and then there's like as you build up like your skill bar. Once you get to the top, um, you can press L, um, RT and LT at the same time and perform whatever trick you are, and it slows down time, and it just puts a massive score on there kind of like how ssx tricky once you hit the tricky you could do like just crazy kinds of things and it always seems you seem to land it no matter what okay which is nice because sometimes you're struggling um it does give you objectives uh that's how you can get stars so the more stars you get uh they unlock more levels so um so some of them are scores, like get 500,000, get 750,000. Uh, almost one of them every time is collect all the food items. So like there's like pizza, milkshakes, hot dogs, scrambled around. So picking up those, picking up extra cash that you can see that gets your score higher. And each of them also has beat the developer score. Okay. Which is really cool because the developer score is always outrageous like score like 2 million points which i haven't come anywhere near close to so well i mean 
That's what happens yeah. when you have inside information. So oh, definitely. But it, it's it is it is a lot of fun. Um, definitely, it's got you know like the trial style courses where, I mean, you get standard just jumps, and then you get like twisty tracks that are split into multiple different levels. So it's kind of like um, as you're going up, you kind of have to rotate your bike around and then hit brake and then jump over other parts of the level. So it's really fun. Okay. So would you recommend this game to people? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're someone who likes to chase leaderboards and stuff, this would definitely be a good game for you. I'm sure it's probably got some cheap, easy achievements on Xbox as well, so I'm sure Scott will love that. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to bet he will, so... All right. Well, that is Urban Trial Tricky. Thanks, Josh, for stopping in. And uh, I will actually kind of look, be looking forward to this one. CB. Wow. I was going to have you run us through this housekeeping, but there's not a lot. Not a lot of new members on Facebook or Discord this week. No, huh? sad face. But come join us. Yes. Yeah, you could. <laughs> well, when you say it in that voice, especially. <laughs> That'll sell them. We have girls over there now. Now that Alyssa, yeah. you know, is here. Yep. How exciting is that? female. Selling point. <laughs> Representation. Perfect. Uh, but we have a Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash group slash the go cast. And you can catch us over on Discord where you can, you can find the link to that on thegivingoutsider.com. Discord's a lot of, that's where you'll hear me chatting if you, for some reason, want to hear me talk about Near more. Uh, I'm happy to do that in Discord. Please leave us a review on iTunes, if you will. Five stars means, uh, you know, five stars are bust, of course. Oh, it means a lot. Helps the show get discovered. And whatnot. Let's let's jump to our From the Outside In topic. Every first episode of the month, we ask all of you to come up with a conversation setting questions for us to answer on the show from our 4R From the Outside In topic. We uh, post on Facebook, Discord, Twitter, etc., and these are the questions that y'all came up with. Coming from Facebook first is Sean Coates, who asks, What are some of your favorite game franchises or series that made their debut on the sixth generation consoles? He also adds, yes, he's going to be making this a recurring thing. So sixth generation would be PS2, Xbox, and GameCube, right? And the Dreamcast. Okay. Is that right? Yes. I guess so. Yeah, 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 you're right. Well, I mean, CB, what, uh, any exciting franchises that began here? I have three. Uh, oh, oh, how very British of you. <laughs> um, Fatal Frame. Oh, yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, Halo. <laughs> also great. So, and uh, Guitar Hero. Oh, I, I used to love playing Guitar Hero. I, oh, I still love playing Guitar Hero. <laughs> Don't get to play it much anymore these days, though, so. It was almost. It's almost a ritual for me to play Guitar Hero every night. What about what about you, Alyssa? You got any games from this era? You're, you, or franchises, I guess. Let's see. Was the first Devil May Cry on PS2? Because. It was. Okay, yes. the Devil May Cry franchise. Because I love that franchise. Let's see. This is a really hard question. I'm having to go back years and years in my mind for this. Um, right, yeah, that's that's how I feel too. I feel like I gotta rack my brain. Oh God, <laughs> I'm trying to. I just Devil May Cry, and I'm just I'm blanking. I mean, I cl mean clearly, clearly, Seaman from Dreamcast. Uh, I never played that one though. Oh, but Leonard Nimoy. That's not a franchise. Did they do it? They didn't do it too, did they? No. But but he did ask. He said franchise or series. Yeah. So. Yeah. So no semen. Oh. I did really like Nimoy. as a kid the Blood Rain games. I don't know how they hold up now, but as a kid I loved loved playing those. I was too young, but I played them on PS2. So I'll go with that because fond memories. Now to think of a third one, and this is gonna take forever. <laughs> Sean Coates, oh boy. why? <laughs> yeah, man, yes, yes, a stumper. Uh, I guess I would, I would back you on Devil Do May Cry. It's a fantastic series. Devil May Cry three is so hard too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and but great, and then Devil May Cry five was excellent. I pretty much liked every. I mean, Devil yeah. May Cry two is the weakest, to be honest. Um, 
Yeah, it seems like they were almost trying to make it bad, honestly. Jesus. Well, I mean, I, I, I know one that would be right up Zach's alley, so. Was that? Okay. Max Payne. I was just about to say Max Payne. I was like, think, oh, yeah, I, I guess it did it. start yeah. then, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Dude, that's near the top then for sure. I love Max Payne. Max Payne, too. Ooh, an all timer. Yeah, I'm gonna See, go, like, I was going to go. I immediately thought it yeah. stands the time, but I guess Max that Payne. is not that is not the start of the Prince of Persia franchise. I got three. Perfect. Well, I'm going to go. I'll go Don't Make Cry, Max Payne, and then, of course, Dragon Guard. Oh, yeah, Dragon Guard. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. That'll be. Well, since that's one of the all time greats. Well, since since Dreamcast needs a little love and I can't say semen, I'm gonna say crazy taxi. Oh man, Shenmu. Shenmu, what am I doing not saying Shenmu? Uh, I was I was wondering when you were gonna catch up on that one. Sorry, I gotta I gotta bump I gotta bump Dante off the list. I'm sorry. Shenmu, definitely. Shenmu, Max Payne, Dragon Guard. Fair enough. Even though even though I've not played Shenmu 3. Uh, but I don't know if I, I haven't either. take the pain yet. Uh, well, let's shift over to Brandon's. Did you? Did we get? We got a three out of Alyssa, right? Yeah. yeah, it took me a bit, but got three. You stumped me, Sean. Okay. You stumped me. All right, Brand- <laughs> Brandon Smith wrote it and asked, "In honor of the Olympics and the historic first ever four by four hundred mixed relay, if you could put together your own four person relay team using video game characters only, with two male and two female members, who would be on your team?" And in what order would you place them in the relay? Oh, no. I don't know <laughs> enough about it. Oh, boy. Hey, you know what? Alyssa, let's start with you. No. I'm the one that doesn't know anything about sports at all. Well, no, no. You're building your own team of video game characters. Okay. So, so. I don't know how relay. Do you want Do you want your fastest person at the end of a relay or at the yeah. start of a relay? You ideally want your fastest either at the beginning so you get the light, nice, strong lead, or you want them as your anchor. So you're four. You're, okay. you're first or you're fourth. But I mean, it, uh, y- y- it's all about strategy. I mean, Sonic's kind of a no-brainer because he's so fast. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, Sonic and Shadow are the no-brainers. Let's see. Who else do I think would be real? Lara Croft probably has the endurance to run pretty fast. I don't know about this placement stuff. Just, I'm just going to name characters right now. You're just going gonna, gonna to... Build- can you do a shell from portal and just like just have her know, just portal for one hundred meters? <laughs> Cheat the way through. <laughs> does it? Does that count? Hey, it's video game characters. We can do it. All right. Let's see who else. Who else would be good? Uh, you know what? I guess. Well, I guess I should let you actually build your team before I interject with mine, huh? I'm just, I'm holding everybody up with these questions. Oh no, no, you're fine. <laughs> See Bayonetta. Oh, Bayonetta, because she has that dash. Oh, that's well. She's only, yeah. She also got huge legs. She does. So I'm eyeing Bayonetta, and plus everyone would like to look at her. So that's yeah. That's I need one wrong. more. One more. Let's go with Roach from The Witcher, because we need a horse on this team. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's a dude. <laughs> I like that. He <laughs> might even fly. Who knows? Wow. All right. I mean, what about you, CB? You got a uh, yours constructed over yes, there? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, so, so le- leading off my team, I have Yennefer. Oh. From. Okay. Because she's just going to magically portal herself across. Uh, Echo the Dolphin is my second. Okay. It's going to be tough on land. So, well, but, but this is a. I'm, I'm assuming. Oh yeah. Well, I forgot that. For for some reason, my brain was thinking um, water. So if if we have to do that, I, I will remove Echo the Dolphin. Probably wise. Uh, and <laughs> flop it, flop it to death on the track. And I will go with Mas- Master Chief. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, then I have Sonic, of course. Right, and then to to round out my team, uh, since my my original answer will also not work, uh, I'm gonna have to go with, uh, yeah, probably uh, Shadow, because originally I. What is that? Th- is that three boys though? Um, you know what? Then I will go with. Uh, I I will move Sonic to my number four, and I will put Laura Croft in as my number three. 
Okay. Because originally I had this built for for water. And so I had Yennefer, Echo the Dolphin, Sonic, because there is the swimming section. And well, he could also just run on the he could run on the surface yeah. if he needs to. And then I had the Razorback from Hydro Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess it's character. So so yeah, uh that that's who I will go with though for my my four. Okay. Uh I would I would say Sonic and Shadow the Hedgehogs are gonna be my anchors. And then oh a fetch from Infamous First Light. Oh, good choice. Because she can do that kind of kind of teleporty thing. And oh boy. Well, since you brought it up earlier, I think yes. you have to go with Shell. Shell Shell's good. What about uh Crystal from Star Fox who just hops in her R Wing real quick? Yeah. Just kind of yeah. cruises, just cruises down the track for 100 meters. Well, what are you talking about? She doesn't need to, even need to be hockey. She can have her R wing already booted up. Just like throw, throw the baton <laughs> into it and just launch. Perfect. And you know what? Another character everyone would like looking at. Yeah. Is that just me? We're foxes are in. Okay, we're, we're getting weird here tonight. It's okay. <laughs> we're getting <laughs> into right. the furry section. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen some of Rare's artwork of her, but uh, I think they had some furries on staff. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm, su- I'm surprised we handled that at all, guys. Me too. We, but we did it. We got there. It's okay. All right. Well, now let's jump over to Discord, uh, starting with Thomas Bex, who asks, who says, sorry, declares even, we are going on a date, but then follows up, where would you take me? Is 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 money an object? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, hey, will your wi- will your wife frown on you spending too much money on Thomas? No, no. She she likes Thomas. She we that's good. We hung out both both here okay. in the states and in Ireland. Wow, I didn't really. You've been to Ireland? Yeah, oh, that's cool. Oh, okay. So humble rag. Yes, it is. So, but well, if money is no object, then Thomas. You and I, we are going to go to a Cubs game and hang out. And then, oh, that's a good one. And then we will fly overseas and we will catch a football game. Wow, big day. Yeah. That's a long day. Yeah. But I mean, if you, if you time it right, it's all good. And then, then we will end with a, uh, a lovely picnic at the Cliffs of Moher in Galway. Oh, oh. that's nice. Wow. Well, who's going to top that? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, if I suddenly become rich, Thomas, you can choose if we go to Disney World, Disneyland, or Universal Studios. We'll just spend the whole day there. Do whatever well, you want to do. Well, at that point in time, go to Disney Paris. We could go to Disney. We'll go to Disney Paris then, because I've never been there. We can eat some yummy Parisian food, and yeah, we could just have a grand old time in Paris. Thomas gets spoiled. Well, Thomas, I'm going to not treat you as well. <laughs> um, and we're, I'm just going to take you to a nice comic shop. I'm going to buy you, I'm gonna buy you a tray paperback of your choice. And I'll get a copy as well. And we'll read it at a cafe together and we can discuss it. It'll be great. Tell me, I mean, tell me you're not going to marry me then. Some, sometimes that works, man. I mean, yeah. It's a thought. I'm trying to keep it realistic on my budget. Hey, that's What's a my... great introvert date, though. Yeah, what? yeah, that's right. That's as much of a date you're going to get out What's of. That's why I asked if if money is no object. Yeah, no, I, I understand. I just want a corporate comic book. Thomas and I, we talk about comic books. You know, yeah. Actually, when when I first met Thomas uh, in Ireland, that's what we did. Is we went to a comic shop. That's all. How how are the comic shops in Ireland? Uh, not bad. They... they they had a lot of uh, nice stuff. Are they any? Are they any different at all? Really? No, not really. Just everything's in euros. Oh. Ld Gundy Seven asks. Oh, well, for, well, well first you he rebuttaled to Thomas by saying, "LOL, contestant number one, if I was food, what would I be, and how would you eat me?" And the answer is, uh, "You'd be a cheesecake, and I would eat every crumb." Oh. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, okay, seriousness. I love how the newer Fallouts have their bartering system set up. With the idea that things are traded back and forth and then accepted all at once uh, at the end. 
I really wish more games would adopt that system or style because some barter systems seem to take forever or cut into thanks for buying segments that force you to buy items individually. Are there any systems or mechanics that work so well in one game that you wish it was in others? I will. I will kick this one off. Uh, okay. With with a okay, you're right. with a little love for Mr. Uh, Zach Parkerson, the Nemesis system. Oh yeah, needs to be in I mean, more on. games. It's absurd that it's not. It must be patented or something, right? Like, why wouldn't somebody use this? I don't know. It's just like we only we only ever got two outings of it, and the second time it wasn't that great. No, 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 it was not. Or worth playing at all. They turned Shelob into they turned Shelob the Spider into a sexy woman though. Yes, yes they did. <laughs> that was that was bizarre. C- can you imagine like an Arkham style game though with a nemesis system? Oh, that'd be so cool. I mean to me to me a superhero seems just tailor built for this because of because of the no killing. Yeah. Right? Like it's just it's so it makes so much sense. But no, it'll never happen. Uh, I, I mean I'll I'll say for it I'll say for me. Uh, and I say it often, is an act of reload. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the the act of reloading in Gears of War is so satisfying that it blows my mind that no one else has really done anything with that. Yeah, that that is kind of weird. Uh, but, but again, that, that could be very much uh, patented... I mean, I don't, I don't think so, because you there were every now and then, like that game Quantum Theory... I don't remember that, but it was like just like Japanese Gears of War that had an active reload. It's some game, some game I played relatively recently had it as well. Um, but I would have to, I'd have to remember all the games I played this year. Uh, but it, it, it shows up every now and again. Whenever it does, it feels good. And I just, yeah, I, I wish more games did it. I understand it probably doesn't. It's never really justified narratively, but sometimes you just have to make a mechanic and not care. Fair enough. It is fair. For me, it'd be the scaling difficulty in the background. So in the game, if you're, you know, struggling a little bit, the game makes it easier on you. Or if you're really just kicking butt, the game makes it harder. I would really like that some more. Yeah. Instead of having to choose a yeah, difficulty I mean, I, level. Especially like, like Max Payne did it and Resident Evil 4 both did it. And those games were so long ago. You would think, yeah, no, that's, that's a great system. You're absolutely correct. Because that way it makes it feel, you don't have to feel guilty, or your pride doesn't have to get hurt yeah. as much either, you know? <laughs> like, you don't have to, it's not like Don't Make Cry when you lose against a boss, it's like, are you sure you don't want to play on an easy, oh, no. man? I'm like, yes, I'm sure. Or in the newest Resident Evils, you're playing on normal, it's like, are you sure you don't want to play casual? <laughs> yeah, or, or, ugh, when, like, a Nintendo game is like, are you, do you want to just skip this boss battle? I'm like, no, I do not! I, I think the more annoying one from Nintendo is the, you've been playing for a while, would you like to take a break? <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Every time you talk to Fee in Skyward Sword, she gets your reminder of how long you've been playing this session. And every time I want to slap her across the face. Yeah. <laughs> that makes me kind of angry. Be sure to take a rest, Master Link. You've been, you've been, this session has been four hours and 28 minutes. You're like, yeah, I know. I'm trying to beat this game, but you won't let me. Like, Fee, we're gamers. Okay, we don't go outside. (laughs) The sun hurts, Fee. (laughs) Well, I think we have some pretty good answers. Let's put them all together in one game, and then you get the genius game going. Yeah. Mick Sweaty on Discord also uh, wrote in. He asked, my biggest fear regarding video games is at some point I won't enjoy the hobby anymore. What is yours? My biggest fear is being judged in multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I guess. <laughs> Understood. Yeah, that's been addressed already. Um, Another video game crash. Uh, okay. Yeah. Like that, that or something catastrophic happening to my collection oh yeah i would i would be a very sad boy i mean that that would be miserable (laughs) the collection thing oh my god uh biggest biggest fear for me is um i all of my favorite franchises being open world i guess um i just don't I, I can't engage in open world games the same. So, like, you know, if they made another Splinter Cell and it was open world, that would just be 
that would feel awful to me. Or even, or even like, I don't know, like there are games that are open world, like a Final Fantasy, I guess is technically open world, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel that way, you know, it doesn't feel like an Ubisoft or EA kind of open world. So I guess that's, that really is just kind of my fear. And is that everything, everything will need to feel, need to be 60 hours and it just doesn't, that's not the case. An open world near surrounded by microtransactions and commercials. <laughs> right. Climbing all the towers. It'll be great. Yeah, that's uh, that. That's, that would that would crush me. I'm all for the hub and spoke systems or the or the you know the, a gear gated adventure, but there's yeah, this that you can have too much of a good thing. But uh, Caramel Bear, speaking of too much of a good thing, he offers you a blank check here. Caramel Bear asks, "You're allowed to create a game with a blank check, where the only requirement that needs to be met is that the game has to contain one thing that's controversial." Aside from that, everything else is up to you, setting, story, etc. What would that one controversial idea be? See, to me, I'm curious if he means like a controversial gameplay mechanic, or does he mean like a controversial narrative idea? I, I'm, I came up with a controversial narrative idea. I'll let you two go first. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, mine's, I feel like mine's pretty controversial uh, as well. You know what, I'll start it off. That's fine. Uh, ever I've talked about this on Smirk, my uh, my storytelling podcast all about morality and ideas, is that I uh, would love your controversial element to be um, is you have like a romance story and then it turns out the characters are related, ah! but they don't find out until later. So, so and Luke and Leia? Kind of, but in this scenario, they decide to stay together anyway. Um... <laughs> If you watch some certain See, think... anime, this already oh, yeah? happened. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah, I guess I guess it is. Uh, that does sound like something Japan would do. Uh, the the inspiration does largely come uh, from Arrested Development, where they 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 main care or the main character's son has a crush on his cousin or whatever, and there's a lot of back and forth about whether or not they're related, etc. Um, and I just always I remember being a kid. I'm like, what does it matter if they're cousins? Especially if they, especially if you don't procreate. Uh, anyway, you can listen to an episode of Smirk if you really want to hear um, more information on that. I just think it would be interesting, or shocking rather, I guess it is a little shock value, is if you do tell like a beautiful love story, like a Tetis and a Yuna, but then also their cousins or something. Okay. So, top that, CB. All right. Um, you-, you, you, know, you, you got one, Alyssa? Uh, I'm thinking about it. All right, I want Wolfenstein 3D. Uh, Wolfenstein 3, but it has time travel elements, and I want to put BJ Blazkowicz in front of Baby Hitler. <laughs> you want to? You want to infanticide? You want to murder some babies? <laughs> Make the player pull the trigger? Yeah, but but again, it's uh, like you you know what's going to happen, like who this person is going to grow up to be, but at the same time, like it's an infant. But it's going to be almost like the uh, that scene in Last of Us 2 where the game just waits until you push buttons. Oh, boy. And it doesn't cut away. That would be, you're right. That would, that would be controversial. Yeah. I, I can tell you, I have another controversial idea that I had for years. Uh, because I always thought it would be very interesting if at the end of the Gears of War trilogy, Dom and Marcus were together. Um, but it shouldn't be controversial in this day and age, but I would like the action story about rescuing, like, somebody's loved one, but then it turns out that the loved one of this action male protagonist was another dude. And it shouldn't be controversial, but I can't think of any gay ma- male gay and male lead video game characters. I think of plenty of gay female characters who are the lead, but I can't think of a single gay guy. I'd, Definitely not an action star. I mean, I'd, I'd be okay with it. I'd still play it. No of, co- no, of course. It shouldn't be a big deal, but I feel like even somehow in 2021 it would, still, it would somehow be controversial. Yeah. I can, I can understand that. Oh, so you thought any controversies yet? I have not. <laughs> Apparently I'm not oh, yeah. controversial enough. <laughs> Commercials before every boss fight? That'd be controversial. That would be actually- no, 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 no. 
commercials mid boss fight. <laughs> Every time the boss hits you, a commercial <laughs> plays for 30 seconds. <laughs> Dude, I thought of a great Dark Souls game idea. Yeah. <laughs> But but you know what? I'd be more okay with it if they did the RoboCop commercials, where like they're fake commercials. Oh yeah, that'd be kind of a fun like for like a one-off boss fight, in, like a sci-fi game or something. Yeah, like his like, his psychic into you with ads. His psychic attack just ports these like horrible commercials into your brain. How has Hideo Kojima not, Kojima not done this yet? I'm I have no idea, man. I thought it's something that it's not really controversial, but it could be annoying. Is you start the game off, you know, in your native language, but then the game just automatically switches to another language you don't understand, so you don't know what's going on with the story, and then periodically it switches back to English. You still don't know what happens, and then it goes back to the other language. So the whole oh, time you're like, the story, what? Oh no, we'll we'll, we'll take that a step further. It rotates through every, like every other word, oh, rotates yeah. through a different language, and there's no subtitles. Yes, we're gonna learn language the most difficult way possible. I don't hate it. I don't hate the idea. <laughs> but but we we also have to include like defunct languages like Latin, Greek. It'd be fun if it. It'd be fun if it was randomized, right? Yeah. And the community could work together to piece together the actual story. Again, uh, that, this seems like a Hideo Kojima thing he would do. Right, yeah. yeah apparently, this is just, yeah, we're all thinking like Kojima. That's how you get these things done. I'm going to laugh if somehow that pops up in, like, his next game. I'm going to be like, no, we missed it. It's like, we need credit. Well, then, then we would know he's listening to the show. That'd be nice. Yes, yes, it would. All right, well, let's, let's move away from controversy here. Drew Ross writes in, you can meet three famous people for an hour each. Who would you meet, and where would you spend that time? This is like another tough question. Uh, the funny thing is, my, my partner at work and I recently had this conversation. So you're prepped. Yes. So I will go first. Uh, number one, Neil deGrasse Tyson. For, for anybody okay. who knows me, that, that should be a given. Yeah, as you say, that should have been obvious. But Park Bench and Central Park, for him. Okay. So... Homeboy gets to stay in New York where he, he is. I'm okay with that. Uh, number two, Jim Lovell. Uh, from, I don't know who that is. He was on Apollo 8 and Apollo 13. Tom Hanks' character. Oh, okay. So um, my, my dad got a chance to meet him uh, here a few years, like a few years back. Um, talked with him. He said he was a really nice guy. I love, I love space and everything like that. So uh, like just... Sitting down and talking to, with him, like, over dinner would be awesome. Uh, and then my number three would be John Carpenter of uh, mo- movie director, The Thing, Escape from New York, Escape from L.A. Uh, yeah. My favorite director of all time. I would just love to sit down. A and, gamer as well. Yeah, I would just love to pick his brain and just talk about The Thing. Like, it, oh, it would make my day. And I don't care where we talk. It just for him anywhere would be fine. Those are great choices. They are astronaut. Didn't expect an astronaut. Yeah, an astronaut, an astrophysicist, and a director of movies. Yeah, a- who's made some sci-fi movies, right? So you're you're spaced out. I am. Alyssa, do you know who you'd like to meet? I would like to meet Hayao Miyazaki. I would love to go to Studio Ghibli's headquarters, studio, whatever you want to call it, because he's working on possibly his last film. I'd just like to shadow him because I've seen every documentary out there about him, and he's so grumpy. But he's like the grumpy grandpa that you just always wanted to have. I just want to watch him and just see how grumpy he is. And just see the magic of Ghibli. (laughs) And then I would love to... Just take take in the magic. Yeah, take in the magic. Be like, can you name a character after me? He'd be like, no. Too much of a hassle. (laughs) He likes to say everything's a hassle. I would like to be uh, Keanu Reeves, because he just seems like the the greatest person alive. Like, just so sweet. Like, we can meet anywhere. I just want to pick his brain, talk to him, 
chat. Just see, see what the Ask lovely his recent, man. His recent comic book. Berserker. I have all those issues and I haven't read it yet. Oh, all that are out. Oh, it's, it's pretty. But I'm gonna, I, I was going to binge it. It is surprisingly it. solid. I think you'll like it. It's uh, very R-rated. I like R-rated. Yeah, I just said I didn't expect it out of the internet's hero. Oh, no. He just seems so sweet. <laughs> My last one's really hard. And I think I'm going to go with Tom Hiddleston just because he's of the moment. I just want to pick his brain. And just... I want to be in the TVA headquarters, the set. And just ask him <laughs> about how he portrays Loki, how he gets into that mindset. Listen to his British accent. Ask him to dance because he's a fantastic dancer. This is getting really thirsty. So I'm I'm gonna leave yeah. it at that. <laughs> Big dance with without your shirt, please. <laughs> right. Is he is he on your uh you do you and Sean have a famous five? Uh n- not officially. I was just, I was just seeing how how well you were gonna try to play your thirst card. That's all. <laughs> See how well, how far you go. Uh boy, for me, I guess uh, number one would be Jeff Johns, uh, who might not be famous to everybody, but he's a big comic book writer, showrunner of Star Girl, big executive producer at DC. Uh, he did he did the greatest run of Green Lantern and also the greatest run of comic books ever, and I would really. I'd love to just talk to that guy over, like, a coffee or something. You know, it would just be amazing. Uh, I guess I guess Jason Bateman would be one for me. Uh, and while I've seen, I think I've seen everything he's ever done. And Rest of Development is my favorite show ever. And he's just, uh, I guess, he's influenced a lot of the way I do a lot of things. Um, hopefully he's not an a-hole. Because it, like, it seems like you could catch him on a bad day. Uh, and then I don't, don't know who else. This, is Yoko Taro famous? Yeah. I don't know if he yeah, counts. Yeah, he's famous. I mean, uh, I, mean I, I said Jim Wait. Lovell and you were like, who's that? Yeah, yeah. I guess Yoko Taro, but he's the one I'm the most afraid of meeting. Like, what if he doesn't <laughs> live up to my expectations? But he's also my lord and savior. If he is, uh, if he talks to me like anything... Uh, you know, the way he talks to his interviews, I think we'll have a good time. Oh, well, if he comes wearing there's the also, There's head. also a narrative. Perfect. I would, I would respect that. I would ask him for one. And we could just know, jam it out together. That'd be perfect. I'll, I'll even take, like, a facade mask, one of the citizens of facade. That'd be great. There's one specific plot point in Europe, again, I would love to ask him for clarification on. It can help me sleep at night better. Um, yeah. So I guess, and then, like, yeah, all of them over coffee. I don't know why. I don't know what else I would do. Maybe to, maybe meet Jason Bateman on set so I can like get myself in a scene or something. That'd be cool. That'd be kind of cool. All right. So, uh, Stefan Roming writes in with a real difficult question: Which game character reflects your personality the best? It could be from any game genre, console, or year. That's a that's a big question. It is a question. Amanda Ripley. From, oh, by, from my UCB, <laughs> Amanda Ripley from uh, Alien Isolation. Really? Yeah. Just because she's so scared. No, I mean the the girl just keeps trooping forward. She's like, "Well, crap, this sucks. Keep going." And you're a trooper. I try to be. I mean, when when you're staring down a Zeno, I mean. You either just curl up and let it do its thing, or you keep fighting. Fair enough, man. What about, what, listen, do you, have, do you have an answer to this question? I'd probably, I'd probably say Max Caulfield from Life is Strange, because she's into movies, and she's, you know, very loyal to her friends. She's creative. I think, I think we're similar, kind of. Close as I can think of, of any <laughs> character. Right. Yeah. Um, man, I guess I'm, man, I feel like I'm overthinking this question compared to you guys. I wish I was like Sam Fisher. He's, he's all I ever wanted to be growing up. Um, 
but I will. I guess I will say Lara Croft, um, just because I got a I got a tattoo because of her, um, and I yeah I guess I do. I've been through ugh, sounds I don't know a pretentious or self indulgent, but I've been through stuff in my life and like to think that I survived. So I connect with her being a survivor, and it being such a theme to her, especially her most recent origin. So I guess I would say Lara Croft. That's a good one too. Yeah, yeah. I was just surprised you didn't Plus, go with like Alan like, Wake because because he's a writer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Lara's cool. She she's also uh, she also has some problems. That require therapy, so I don't know. I feel like uh, we have a long. She also accidentally causes an apocalypse, which sounds like something I would do. <laughs> Honestly, well. I can see myself being <laughs> Lara Croft too. Now that you point out all this stuff, she's that that new trilogy is really it's something special. Yeah, you know, they really it really is. Yeah, they did, they did a lot with her characterization. They gave her too easy of an interruption at the end of the trilogy. What are you gonna do? But that might that might say something about me. Maybe I don't think I deserve it. Anyway, Silly Willie writes in. We're about to we're sound like we're on an episode of Smirk here. Uh, Silly Willie writes in, what's a game you hated the ending of? How would you have liked it to conclude? I'm going to answer this right away, because the answer is Breath of the Wild. It's the worst ending to any video game ever. And you could have easily improved it by having Link and Zelda interact in any way at all. It's, it's horrible because you stole so my answer. Breath of the Wild is... It's such... It's an unbelievably bad ending. There's no interaction between the three primary characters, right? Calamity Ganon, and Zelda or Link. It's unreal how bad the ending of Breath of the Wild is. It's so bad it makes the game worse. I, I love the game. It that ending was bad enough that it makes me never want to play it again. And yeah, a game I put like 120 hours into, and I never want to touch it ever again. Yeah. And I, I loved the the puzzles, the dungeons. Everything about that game, but that ending has left such a bad taste in my mouth that I'm like, no. It, it it's actually kind of my biggest turn off for Breath of the Wild too, because I'm like, I, see, I will, I will, I will counter that because Breath of the Wild too. I'm like, oh, the ending of Breath of the Wild, maybe. Like, it's uh there's an actual chance. Hopefully, Link and Zelda talk at some point. Yeah, it's but just really it. weird because you you get all the. You get all those flashbacks of them, they have such a close relationship, and then it just ends with them kind of looking, she looks like in Link's direction, and then credits roll. It's ridiculous. Anyway, what about you, Alyssa? This is really hard, but the first one that just came to mind is Rage 2, because the whole game felt unnecessary, and the last boss, it was just kind of like, that's it? Meh. It ended there? Cool. I was surprised anybody played Rage 2. I did. It wasn't the. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not. It's not that great. The ending is just bland. I don't usually play games that have like bad endings, so I'm I'm struggling here. Well, that's that's lucky. I liked the first rage quite a bit, although it also had a terrible ending. That's true. That'll happen. I mean, yeah. That, that is kind of bad, though. That. Both of your games have bad endings. Well, you're all Rage and Rage too. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, conversely, Skyward Sword has a great ending. So It's okay, I don't think I'll ever get there. there. Yeah, it's not, it's not worth getting there, but it's great. Uh, Jordan Derringer High writes in, What anime speaks to you most, and which one would you recommend to someone who has never watched anime before? He also has, uh, that, by the way, that's not me. I watch plenty lol uh i will i'm just gonna answer immediately because cowboy bebop is the best anime and it's the best intro anime too i was gonna say Those that but answers. i'm not gonna say the same thing um this is like this is a question that's easy for me didn't you always wasn't it also uh what anime okay what anime speaks to you the most okay for me the, the anime that speaks to me the most is fruits basket because i love it i'm obsessed I am basically Toru, and there's just so many great messages, and I struggle with a lot of the same things a lot of the characters struggle with, and yeah, it's just, it's a great anime. 
I was going to say Cowboy Bebop is great to start with, but since Zach said that, one that I really started with and really got into my whole anime kick was Death Note. It's pretty much a solid anime. There are a few filler episodes, I will say. But it's so easy to get into. It sucks you in pretty much right away. And yeah, it's, just, it's, it's, it's great. Okay. Um, as far as it speaks the most to me, Neon Goodness. Genesis. Like, Neon Genesis, I would, to me, it's like the best. Um, but as far as one for someone to get started on, um, for, um, if you could cut out all the filler episodes and the intros and outros, Dragon Ball Z. Sure. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's very, it's easily consumable. Uh, my son, uh, recently asked to start watching it. He just got to the Android saga. He's been watching close to five to six episodes a day. Yeah. He loves every bit of it. When, when, when you see those like highlight moments, like the, the first, like Goku going super Saiyan, my son went nuts. Uh, <laughs> and, and it's, what's amazing is, uh, cause I've, I've seen the entire series like multiple times. Um, AJ started watching it and de facto, like Jameson started watching it because it's on the big TV. Jameson's watching it. Uh, and I took a video the other day of my four year old son th attempting to throw his first Kamehameha. Oh, and yeah. he like my four year old is now into it. And just every time he hears that intro song, just runs into the room and sits next to his brother. And they're both just like, Yes, give us more. So buy them some orange Tic Tacs and tell them they're sensu beans. <laughs> I thought about just getting them the, the orange shirts, like the geese. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, with the yeah the geese, that'd be cool. Because then I could then I could have a, like a little Goku and a little Krillin. Oh, that'd be so cute. <laughs> I'll just have to shave the four year old's head and put like six <laughs> dots on his forehead. <laughs> I don't know how my wife will react to that, but I'll think it's awesome. <laughs> eh, it's temporary. You know, uh, I really gotta watch the Genesis Evangelion, man. Yes. Yes, you do. Seems like something I would absolutely love. I need to because, watch it, too. Because then you, then we would have so much more to talk about, because I, I have seriously watched through that series at least 15 times. I adore that series. So, and if I had to pick a movie, just... Just for shock value for somebody, like a like a uh, an anime movie, uh, uh, Akira. Okay, yeah, because it is one of the most beautifully drawn animes, and it's still like still to this day holds up. It's wonderful, but also with films, uh, if you just want to get started, Studio Ghibli films, any of them, pretty much. Don't start with Grave of the Fireflies, okay? Just don't. Any other ones? <laughs> start with. They're Princess so Mononoke. easy to get into. Amazing movie. Or or uh, Ponyo. That's good for Ponyo or My Neighbor Totoro. If it's for, I mean, especially for children, those are so yeah. easy to get into. But adults can get into those too. But yeah, Studio Ghibli. Besides Grave of the Fireflies, that will traumatize you if you watch it for your very first anime and it might still traumatize you afterwards like it did me <laughs> uh full metal alchemist brotherhood another great intro anime yes i will agree with that one i haven't watched uh, that one i need to just completely skip full metal alk and go straight to brotherhood because i was wondering do i need cool. to see the first original series or just go to brotherhood okay no it's uh Fullmetal Alchemist was, like, the manga was a chomp and jumping monster. Oof, manga, not manga. Oof, what the manga. hell? My, manga was the jumping off point, but then they had to go in their own direction, whereas Brotherhood is an adaptation of the manga more directly. So it's kind of like Fruits Basket. They made the original Fruits Basket series, and the manga was still going on, and then this new series just follows it completely, so. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, cool. And it's... The story is structured in such a way where as soon as an episode ends, you will want to watch the next one. 
It's yeah. very, it's very good like that. This from a guy who doesn't often binge television. I watched all of FMA Brotherhood in like a week or two. Um, and the final question, Brandon Lloyd, who uh, writes in with a meme of Thanos, look <laughs> smiling happily over his <laughs> success of destroying the galaxy. Uh, captioned with, when you finish every possible quest in a game you loved and enjoy the moment before you shut it down forever. You know, a hard day's work, as it were. Uh, but he asks, what games did this picture make you feel that way? I felt this way big time when I finished all achievements in XCOM 2. It hurt to tell myself six playthroughs was enough. So good. Is there any, is there any game you guys felt like Thanos wiping out half the galaxy? Hmm. This is actually really tough because I don't think there's ever been a game that I'm like, okay, I'm never playing this again. Yeah. Um, other than Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Which, angrily. Now, I've, I've not put it down, but I kind of felt this way after I first got the Arkham City Platinum. Because uh, it was like, finally, like my hard work is finally done. Because those combat challenges are gnarly. But then I did eventually play it again. Um, but uh, that's the only game I can think of that follows the spirit of what Brandon's asking here. All I can think of is, I, I mean, you can't really complete this game. But Skyrim, after putting over 200 hours in this game, completing the main quest, the seemingly endless side quests, I'm okay with being finished with it. I haven't picked it up since it came out and I put 200 hours in. I'm, I'm okay with not playing it again. <laughs> That's a good answer. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, for me, I get... I, I, it's, it's weird, because this question... I, I guess it really doesn't speak to me, because at any point in time, I could pick up any game again. Like, as, as, right. yeah. as much as everybody knows my hatred for WoW, like, I always... The, there's always that inkling in the back of my mind, you're like, you know what? I should just start playing again. And then I immediately find the closest concrete wall and smash my face into it. <laughs> nice. But, uh, yeah, I actually, you know what? Controversial here. Skyward Sword. I don't think I'm ever going to boot that damn game <laughs> up again. You seem, you seem mad you started it at all. I, 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 leg, like, I don't know what it is. I have no desire to play that game again. Did you just start it on the Switch or the Wii? Yeah. Oh, the switch. On the okay. Switch, I made it like four hours in, and I'm just like, I don't want to play this anymore. Uh, actually, and actually, I, I think I gave it to AJ, so I'm curious to see how far he's going to get into it, where he's just like, no, I don't want to play this either. I, honestly, I, I got three hours in, and I've, I've given up. I feel bad. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like some kind of, I feel like I survived Skyward Sword. It feels like no one else wants to beat it. I beat it. And I would say, it's not worth it. I just can't. The controls are the thing that is, is driving me nuts. I can't do it. I, there, do, there is, one of the final bosses requires you to stab. And the stab is so... Uh, you know, it's real. 2080 that it will accept your motion. 20% in favor of actually accepting your motion. And it's frustrating. Maddening, if you will. Well, I I think for the first time in my life, I understand a lot of uh, Zelda fans like when they announce like Skyward Sword coming to the Switch, they're like, "Why?" <laughs> they're like, "There's there's better options. Choose one of those, like Twilight Princess, Majora's Mask." See, to me, I was like, "Ah, yes, you can fix it now." But I was wrong, yeah. Or I, or maybe I was, maybe it wasn't worth fixing, yeah. You know? Maybe maybe it needed a remake, not a remaster. Anyway, yeah. Cut out all the nonsense, because guys, I'm telling you, there are like, there's one dungeon in particular that I would say is like a top five Zelda dungeon ever. It's so good, but to get there is madness. But there is a there's a dungeon that's on a pirate ship, guys. It's friggin' rad. But I can't recommend it. I will I will YouTube and, it. Yeah, we'll just YouTube it and see the end. <laughs> we can YouTube the ending. 
Right. Yeah, that's true. So we don't have to like play through twenty something hours. <laughs> Girahim's a great boss. Just gonna throw that out there too. But anyway, let's see, let's end this. Let's end this sad show, huh? <laughs> uh <laughs> Well, that'll uh, do it for this week's episode of The Gaming Outsider. Thanks for swinging by, guys. So, you know, thanks for uh, suffering through me as a host this week. Presumably Scott Clark will be back to round up The Gaming Outsider so we don't get quite so hard PG-13. Um, but before we depart, CB, do you have any final words you want to say? Um, movie recommendation. I watched The Quiet Place 2. Oh, it's so good. Hey! That was pretty good. And I enjoyed every bit. I thought it was better than the first. I did too. Uh, yeah, I, I can kind of give yeah. you that. Um, but I, th- I think that's the first time that I'm like, wow, uh, like a, a newer movie with a sequel. I'm like, these were both just stellar. Because it, it's been yeah. a while. Because it, it always feels like the sophomore follow-up is just kind of like, oh, it was good, but it wasn't as good. And not for nothing, it's like this franchise, you know, that is like it's a, it's moderately budgeted and made like a moderate return, right? It's not like it's no it's no mega franchise, which seems rare these days. Yeah, um, I've actually I actually like it so much that I wish they would turn it into a game. That would... They did. It's called The Last of Us. Uh, yeah, but I I want more. I I understand what you mean. And in fact, if they make a third movie, I will be there. Oh, they are. It's already Although, in uh, pre-production, I think. Deal. I'm there. When I... Different director, I was though. Quite, but a fantastic did director. Did Krasinski direct one and two? Yeah. This time, is oh, okay. the third one's going to be directed by Jeff Nichols, who directed Take Shelter and Midnight Special. If you have seen those films, they're okay, very... They're, they're excellent. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm not saddened by that choice, but I would have liked to see Krasinski round out the trilogy. Like, you do two really good job, I two really good movies. Like, just finish it out. It felt super obvious to me that John Krasinski is a fan of The Last of Us. There's there was a lot of stuff happening in Quiet Place Part Two that felt very clicker related. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Great movie, though. You're right. What about you, Alyssa? You got any recommendations or anything uh, non-gaming you wanted to say real quick? So I've recommended anime the last time I was on, and I'm going to recommend another one. And I'm not through with it yet, but I've been watching Dr. Stone, which I'm sure everyone that's a fan of anime, like hardcore fans, already seen this. But if you haven't, it's really good, and it's got an interesting premise. It's, it takes place in the modern day, but everyone turns to stone. And then it jumps like 3,700 years into the future, and these two boys that went to the high school together, Sinku and Taiju, wake up, and the world's like looks like prehistoric again, but there's no dinosaurs. It's just nature has taken over, and they have to figure out how to revive all the other people that are encased in stone. And it just, it really blends really educational science moments, which I never thought would be entertaining, with some really serious emotional moments, and then you just it throws in humor at you would think the worst time, but it works so well, and it always makes me laugh. I'm loving the series. So, and I think it's pretty much on every streaming service, so it's really accessible to just watch it. And it's fun. It's fun. Wow. Okay, that, that sounds awesome. <laughs> Not gonna lie. What do you got? Uh, yeah, I guess for for me, uh, not too much. I will recommend uh, they just started a new Superman run from Tom Taylor, comic book writer extraordinaire, called Superman: Son of Kal El, where uh, Superman's son is taking over the mantle of Superman. And sometimes I, I I'm a big fan of passing the mantle with superheroes, which I know is not ultra popular, uh, but this one does it pretty seamlessly, which is no surprise because Tom Taylor seems to have a firmer grasp on the DC universe than anyone has had since Jeff Johns himself. And uh, like his Nightwing book is extraordinary. If you like Nightwing, read Tom Taylor's Nightwing. Uh, but they, they just started this new Superman, and it's uh, 
it's uh, it's interesting. You know, he he feel he feels very much like a teenager because he's like, I'm going to use my powers to stop global warming. But you know, his dad's like, that's really not how this works. But he's like, I'm going to find a way. It's like that's okay. Like he wants to do too much, almost you know, or he thinks he knows better. Uh, but he does still have like the soft heart you'd expect from Superman and stuff. It's 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 a really it was a really great first issue. So it's Super, Superman, son of Kal El, if you're so inclined into the comic bookdom, is pretty good. All right. But thanks for so much for listening to the Gaming Outsider. It's uh, Gaming Outsider is produced by Nate Lucas, and all of the music you hear is written and performed by Grant Henry, who we interviewed. Uh, of Stemage and Metroid Metal. You can find him at stemagemusic.com. Please be sure to email us if you have any questions or concerns. Our address is feedback, feedback at thegamingoutsider.com. Until next week, I'm Zach Parkerson. With me is Chris Behrens, Meyer, and Alyssa White. And we are The Gaming Outsider. And remember, there's no such thing as a bad game, just games that aren't for you. Mm-hmm.